Hello, hello, and welcome to the Body Meets Mind podcast, philosophies and strategies for an elevated life. I am Paul, and Tommy, you are right alongside me, aren't you? I'm Tom, and I am uh, right alongside you. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good, mate. Um, we uh, we just recorded a podcast then. That's a, That was a really awesome show. It was... Um, that was the first time you and I had kind of ever done a co-hosting mm. and um, it went fucking really, it went really well. Yeah, really, really well. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there was talk about when are we going to speak? When are we going to pull back? <laughs> but I feel like it naturally just kind of engaged and it was, uh, it, it kind of played out really intuitively, which uh, I kind of had a sense it was going to take place that well way mm. because it's the way our relationship has kind of uh, blossomed ever since uh, we, yes. we met that that fateful day at CrossFit Dog Father. <laughs> Mate, I remember it well. It was a lovely spring morning. The, uh, the birds were <laughs> singing, the sun was shining. I think it was probably really raining and we didn't like each other. Well, it was Melbourne, so yeah, <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. I think you punched me. I did. That's right. Yeah, yeah I'm still going to yeah. court. <laughs> <laughs> so if, uh, you know, charges aren't pressed against you, we'll continue this podcast. That's right. Um, uh, so uh, on, a, on, a, on a slightly more serious note, mm. uh, something, something incredibly um important uh, has happened with you, Siobhan, in your family uh, mm. over the last few days. And I thought we'd explore it a little bit on this podcast. Uh, you've lost an incredibly dear uh, member of your family, a, a, a dog who has been a part of your your household and your uh, the fabric of your family for some time. And I thought it'd be a, a worthwhile uh, experience to, to really explore that grieving mechanism. What do you think? Yeah, man, I'd love to. I'd really love to. I think, uh, especially because it's a dog, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, we, we, we tend to attribute, uh, you know, serious high end grief stuff to, um, you know, to people and it's, it is obviously terrible to lose people as well, but you know, there was a part of me, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll obviously talk about it and I'm, you know, grief and loss is something that I'm really interested in, in a therapeutic setting anyway. Um, but uh, there was a part of me that kind of felt embarrassed um, in 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 the first twenty four hours because I was so in shock and so in pain. Um, and then I I was looking up the research, and um, you know it, the, the the loss of a pet is um, absolutely on par with the loss of a family member. And um, I didn't know that, and it certainly helped me feel uh, more accepting of the way I was feeling. Um, and then also start to think about all the ways as to why it was such a painful loss for us. Um, you know, dogs in many ways, they're, they're, they're different, um, to, to, to people, family members, um, because, you know, let's say if you lose a parent, you kind of move out of home, you call them every once in a while. If you have a great relationship, you, you speak to them a lot, obviously, um, you don't see them all the time. Um, Steve was, who was the little fella, um, was with us every second of the day mm. you know um we, we got him in lockdown and he, he never left us he'd even walk into the bath room with us and he'd sleep on the bath mat you know so i think um one of the real challenges for us was uh to accept the intensity of the pain and then also like like you mm. and i were discussing um before we pressed record our brains getting used to him not being around and all the ways in which our behavior and attitude and is slightly influenced because of his presence, you know, and he was, he was declining mm. rapidly in the past month. And we just thought about him all the time. Um, you know, we were given kind of six to 12 months cause he had congestive heart failure. Um, and we had eight weeks and we, we didn't know, you know, and he died, um, in Siobhan's arms, you know, he, um, let out a, a big yelp two last breaths. And, and he passed and, um, and, uh, I've never heard Siobhan like that ever. And I've been with her for a long time and been friends with her even before that. Um, so it was very sudden, very sudden, but yeah, all these contradictions and things that we're only trying to really start to accept and own. Yeah. It's, um, you know, it just it reminds me of, uh, when I lost, uh, my, my pet, who was very, very dear to me as well. There's nothing that can really prepare you for a loss like that. You're right. Like I've lost grandparents. I've lost people that are dear to me. Um, and that is incredibly um, sad. Mm. Uh, and 
the grieving process takes place, but there's a, there's something different when when you grow up with uh, you know it's this man's best friend, a friend of yeah. mine who is also a um, a counselor says he, he he thinks dogs are enlightened yes. things, you Shit. know, um, <laughs> they have a special awareness, they have senses that really us humans don't uh, don't have the, the the technology to tap into, and when somebody is special or, or when 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 beings as special as that um we, we lose them because they've been such a special part of our lives the grieving process and the mourning process becomes amplified mm, yeah absolutely it, it's amazing and you know one of the things that um, i actually wrote a blog about this i, I told you i was going to write one um yeah i think i was uh in tears when i was um when i was messaging you the, um, last week and um i knew that you know writing was going to be a healing thing for me because uh, it just puts words to experience. It helps me kind of understand who I am and what I'm going through. Mm. You know, one of the major things that I'm really finding is, um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because we, we spoke to um, um, a psychologist before and he was talk, talking about the benefits of meditation and taking that kind of open awareness and that ability to stand back from it. Grief is just right with contradictions. You know, you feel relieved that he's no longer in pain because he was in a lot of pain. And then straight away you feel guilty because how could you feel relieved that someone's dead, um, someone you love, you know, mm -hmm. and then that brings and induces and ensues suffering. And then as a result, you want to try to get out of that. So you celebrate the good and then you feel guilty about doing that again. So you just can't win with grief. And yeah. for what I've really found is that, there are all these different schools in psychology, you know, CBT is one thing. Um, behaviorism is another thing. The psychoanalytic viewpoint, the psychodynamic perspective has been really helping me, you know, viewing the mind as just a, an ecosystem of forces or fighting for your attention and allowing mm. them to do that, you know? So, you know, I hadn't cried for three or four days. Um, and for whatever reason, I was bawling my eyes out this morning and I have no idea why. I wasn't, I didn't look at a photo of him, of him or anything. I just started crying. And what's really been helping me has um, uh, been allowing that, you know, if, if, if sadness won that race, then that's what I have to do. You know, anger won the race a couple of days ago. Um, and I had a furious workout because I was just really pissed off that we didn't get more time with him mm. or that actually to be completely open and honest um, that he had to die in Siobhan's arms, not mine. Um, uh, you know, so it's been helping me to go, you know what, right now, sadness one, bang, I'm going to be crying, you know, guilt one, whatever it is, I'm going to feel sorry for myself. So, yeah. It's, um, a hell of a ride, I'm sure. And, and you're in it right now, you're in the eye of the storm and you're experiencing it all. So, you know, you mentioned that writing is a big part of your grieving process and, uh, how you're, you're you're moving and navigating this, and it's becoming a part of who you are. Um, have Have you found there have been any other pursuits that you could really, um, uh, I suppose, latch onto or explore to be able to flesh this out? Well, I, you know, for me, um, talking as well is is really good. And I, and I, I was a little, um, I wasn't hesitant, but I just wanted to, um, say that, um, you know, and kind of highlight the fact that f it, it helps for me because talking doesn't honestly help everyone. You know, there's a big push mm -hmm. that people should speak to therapists and stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it doesn't help everyone. Um, but to me, you know, and you know, um, case in point, um, I went and watched the grand final with uh, my best friend and his wife, who's also a very dear friend of mine. Uh, Siobhan stayed at home, you know, she, she was obviously invited because we're all such close friends, but, um, she needed to intentionally mope and watch keeping up with the Kardashians. Yeah. <laughs> she got told it. me, I've got, to, I've got to do this. Um, <laughs> yeah, side note, I probably would have preferred to watch keeping up with the Kardashians yeah, oh God. than their grand final. <laughs> I know. Oh God, it was terrible. I watched less than three minutes of it, but, uh, and then we ended up watching a horror movie. So, you know, it was just very strange, but I think, um, no matter what it is, owning whatever it needs to be in the moment has been the, the best thing. Were you, so how old were you when, 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 who, what was your pet's name? My pet's name was Minnie. Minnie. And um, 
she was a beautiful um part dash out part cocker spaniel and oh, beautiful. she was a she just had the sweetest nature and uh natty if my wife is listening to this she'll just be laughing because um something happens to me whenever i speak about her i think i turn into a, a, a young boy again you turn I into was, mini <laughs> i turn into mini mini me <laughs> that's right uh, <laughs> Um, I was on tour with my band, uh, I was playing at a festival at Woodford Folk Festival mm. and, uh, it's a big festival in, uh, Queensland. And it's, uh, it's actually, if you, if you've never been there, I highly recommend mm. you go, mm. probably would have been about 25 or, or, or thereabouts at the time. And I was sitting and just, we were in paradise. Like we were sitting there, you know, um, headlining this incredible tour. There was nothing to worry about at all. Like there was nothing but just beauty around us. And we were sitting down at the campsite and uh, I just got up and I just was in the worst mood ever. Anything mm-hmm. anyone said to me, I basically just told them to bugger off. Yeah. Got up and I went for a walk uh, and I was like, so I, I didn't, like I, I, I didn't behave like this. I, I couldn't reference a time where I've behaved like this in the past. Anyway, um, my parents decided to not tell me that that Minnie had passed. And Ooh. after after speaking to them, um, they, they decided to wait until the tour had finished uh, or at least that leg of the tour had finished. We were touring all around the country and this was the uh, the leg that they wanted to wait until the, the, the festival itself was finished. So once they told me I was on the tour bus and uh, obviously just completely uh, a mess yeah. um but i asked them uh, when it happened and and it was we were able to backtrack that it happened at the exact same time that i just lost my shit oh my and, god wow and it didn't make any sense to me that i would behave like that because it wasn't me mm. um but i did and putting the pieces together and my bandmates can can confirm this it's just like it just didn't make sense but now it does mm. and uh, it was just such a a, a connector and and a piece and uh knowing in a in a weird special kind of way that I was present or I felt the presence of Minnie passing mm. at that particular time uh really uh, was a really difficult thing but also a very very kind of uh connecting uh moment for me yeah it, it's amazing i mean you know one of the things we're noticing is that just how much connection plays a role in the grieving process mm. you know and i obviously um don't want to contradict myself because i said people grieve in different ways before but you know we're really finding i'm certainly finding anyway i'll speak for myself in that um open honest conversations you know every conversation you and i have on the podcast is is a is a connector it you know it helps with 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 empathy and so forth um and then and just the just the people who've reached out to me um and just said hey you know I, i'm it, it's actually really helped me um when people have been saying oh you know our little thing you know toby died or whatever it was a couple of months ago we still haven't gotten over it as well um i don't know whether th- this is my own um, just implicit assumption or whatever it was, but I, you know, I've lost pets in the past, but because I wasn't the primary caregiver, it didn't hit me as much as it did. At mm. least I don't think so. Um, mm. you know, Leo and Carl passed, they were Cavaliers, but I think Steve for us was just a very special dog. Um, I, and I still don't know why. See, I, I still know I'm in the grieving process because a lot of the, the dots haven't been connected yet. Um, but, uh, you know, <laughs> irrespective as to how esoteric it is, um, just you being in that mood at the time of Minnie's passing, to me anyway, speaks to that connectedness that's that's so deep that we don't really even understand what the hell's going on. You know, and we're seeing our dog, like one of our dogs, Archie, never does this. But two nights ago, it was dead silent in the house. He wakes up and he's looking directly in the kitchen. We can't see anything. Nothing's moving. It's dead silence. And he's, and we're just looking at him and his eyes are just following something, you know, and for 10 minutes, like this wasn't just a 20 second thing. I was standing the whole time, just looking at him doing this thing. It was very strange. Wow. Now, obviously that lends itself to, oh, well, if he's still around, it's a lovely thought, mm. but, um, irrespective as to what it is, it's, um, 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't kind of don't, don't know where I'm going with that, but it's interesting. It is interesting. And, you know, like obviously we can go down a, a number of different yes. paths uh, yes. with this, but ultimately right now you're, you're in, uh, you're in this process. And, and I think uh, add, uh, you know, we just got off the um, a podcast with uh, Dr. Rich mm. and, uh, you know, he was talking about, you you asked him a, a, a remarkable question, which was, you know, h- how do you w- want to see the world? Right. Well, I'm paraphrasing. But, um, you know, he, he said to a certain degree there was this element of self-awareness that um, should be cultivated with every individual and then you can kind of uh, do with that what you will. Mm. And I think the work that you've been doing on yourself over the last number of years has given you this ability to be able to really, really immerse yourself in an experience like this and, and say, I'm hurting. I'm experiencing a whole different range of emotions and, and feelings, but it's an incredible, it's an incredibly deep, vulnerable learning experience. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that, that's one of the, um, points that I made in the blog, it's that um, I, I really have started to notice it's a wonderful gift in 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 a way because um, I'm reading so much about death and dying at the moment because it's, it's always been a deep fascination for me. You know, it's the ultimate equalizer. It's where we're all headed. And um, learning to make sense of that and reading some of the writers who, who've spent their lifetime doing it and administering that kind of therapy has been, has been wonderful. And then life serves me grief on a plate. And, you know, previously it was all about um, death anxiety and and death and dying and loss, and that was all knowledge. But now I have to imply that knowledge to what I'm going through and and it's slowly becoming wisdom. And one of the the points I was trying to make was that wisdom is much more experiential and embodied and it's it's when you you start to live um, by the the dictates of that knowledge Mm -hmm. as opposed to just being able to recite it. Um, and it's a really tough process, um, you know, um, but, it, but it, it's, it's just amazing how life, life serves you that, you know, going all about reading this and you go, oh, cool. You know, you're ready for the practical exam now. <laughs> I don't think I was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wild. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the universe has a strange way of, uh, giving you a, an A plus on your exam, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. But it's, you know, one of the interesting things as well about grief is that, um, you know, we feel that it coming back to that initial point about putting kind of labels on it. And, and this is what, you know, this is what the brain can tend to do is, oh, it was the, the death of a pet, you know, even in the trauma world, little T, big tree, big T is a thing, you know, um, oh, you know, from, from the range of sexual abuse and, and, and prisoner of war camp victim to, um, you know, a dog dying, say, for example, if, mm. if someone views it like that or um, parents being divorced, whatever it is. And I think in many ways that's not necessarily an individual's fault because they're trying to map their experience. But sometimes, or at least what I'm noticing is that grief is much more about feeling as opposed to understanding. And mm. I, in fact, I think the understanding comes by feeling it all, mm. you know. Um, yeah, what do you think? I want to stay on that for a moment. Yeah. What do you what, what do you feel the difference is? Is what do you feel the difference is between feeling and understanding, and also where do you feel the benefits come for either and all? Okay, so yeah, that's a good. That's a really good question. I think um, right now, because because I'm in it, it's my maybe this is my own mind and its proclivities, but me trying to understand what's going on is near impossible because it's just a a giant paradox all the time. Mm. And as soon as I start to see a way out, um, that's a dead end and I have Mm. to go another way. You know, Mm. like I said before this morning, you know, feeling fine and dandy and then tears come out of nowhere, you know. Mm. Um, uh, It was, uh, I was just listening to an REM song 
and then started crying. <laughs> I, th- I, mean, I, quite- <laughs> I mean, if you're, you're ever going to want to cry, it's going to be after an REM. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But it wasn't even everybody hurts. It was shiny, happy people. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? you know, so, so that was weird. Um, so, so I think part of me trying to understand it is just trying to feel it all, all the time, you know, and, um, I think that the, the, the good part about that is eventually I'll be able to look back and go, that was what it took to understand it because Mm. this is what was happening at the time. Of course you had to feel that there and you couldn't see that, you know, um, the, the other thing, this is, I think this is an interesting part about grieving is that, um, grieving is always different no matter the person, the animal, um, you know, who's grieving who it's one of it's, it's a struggle because in therapy, so much of it is being able to recognize our patterns Mm. so that we have autonomy in the future that we want to create for ourselves. But grief throws all of that into the bin. And it's just like, Mm. you know, you, you can be as open as you possibly could, you know, having done 48 psychedelic retreats, 20 Vipassanas, you know, and just be this enlightened being. And Mm. then when your father dies or when your pet dies, whatever it is, you're a mess. Mm. But um, that's, 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 that's life. Mm. Sure is. Mate, uh, look, I want to thank you so much for being just open and uh, just taking us on the journey with where you're at and uh, as you continue to move through this because um, it, it's something that I know is really, really challenging for you and it's a really um, important time in your life and Siobhan's life. And, um, yeah, just thank you for, for for holding us privy to what's going on inside of your your hearts and your minds. Well, man, I mean, I wouldn't be able to do it with everyone and uh, you, you're brilliant for holding space. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, it's like, like I said in that blog as well, you know, we're all going to grieve um, at certain mm. points in our lives. And I've actually been pretty lucky. Um, I'm, you know, um, 75% of my grandparents are gone, but again, it, that was, you know, that a lot of them lived away. You know, I never met, um, one grandpa, another grandpa died when I was four. Um, a grandma died back in 2013, but she lived interstate, you know, so I've always been yeah. quite detached from, mm. from the grieving. Um, but you know, more, there's going to be more to come you know, like, like for all of us as well. So it's, uh, yeah, it's one of those things we've got to, we've got to get, um, get on board with. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Well, thanks again, mate. And, um, looking forward to continuing, uh, this journey together, mate. Absolutely. Uh, all right, guys. I hope you guys, I hope you guys found some value out of this and, uh, just, just being privy to, um, you know, kind of how Tom, and how anyone uh, moves through a grieving experience. And, you know, uh, we'd love to hear some feedback as Mm. to how you guys have actually worked through your own grieving experience. Mm. Mm. Sorry, interrupted, but uh, thank you once again. And guys, we will see you for the next episode. See you guys.